How's it going? Juan Das here and welcome back to albeit a very rainy day here in Bogota, here in Colombia. But today I wanted to talk about standards, if you hadn't guessed by me playing Like Someone in Love at the beginning, which is actually one of my favorite tunes and it's one that pops up regularly for some reason over the years with students. And it's just a beautiful tune. But more importantly, I've been catching myself singing tunes lately, you know, just around the house, in between students at work at the university, um, bits and bobs here and there, just whenever I'm, you know, even on the street, just like singing to myself, like, like someone in love, or all or nothing at all, or mean to me, or, you know, just a bunch of these vocal tunes. And it got me thinking, you know, this is something I've been talking about with a lot of students. Um, I've talked a little bit about my process on learning standards here before, but I wanted to get into some of the finer parts of interpretation for standards. Yes, I might not be mostly a standards musician. I kind of market myself really more as a contemporary modern composer and someone who writes their own music and is pursuing that. But one thing's for sure that even to develop a more improvisational language and get into the music, I had to cut my teeth on standards. And I had to learn tunes and be able to survive sessions and things like that. And I think it's imperative that anyone who wants to get into jazz music has to learn standards, even if they do get a bad rap from people who just kind of come into it for the first time and haven't really been guided into, you know, how to check out a standard or how to listen to one. So I wanted to talk about two pieces of advice I have that can probably get you up and running real quick. And the other is just, uh, I want to close out with a couple of thoughts on, you know, the whole topic and just learning music in general. So got a lot to cover so let's dive right in. Now when it comes to learning standards one of the principal qualms that students have is that sometimes it feels like it's a prescribed thing like oh it's something my teacher told me to work on and they only learn it from a sheet they haven't gone and checked out the music um, which I think the, no one's really at fault here I think it's kind of lies on both ends you know the teacher should instill um, kind of a pathway to learn this stuff and how to check it out and maybe motivate the student to do so. And the student should also make an effort to get away from the page and start actually listening to this stuff. And, you know, I grew up in a culture or I grew up in a part of the world where I didn't have jazz readily available to me when I was living in Dubai as a kid. Um, my family didn't really listen to it, even though ironically we had crooners in the house. Like we had a lot of Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Dean Martin and that stuff. Um, but I never th put, made the connection as jazz as a kid. Um, and we also didn't listen to it enough to really have it, jeez, it's really coming down outside. But yeah, we didn't listen to it enough to the point where, you know, that was a seminal part of my childhood. So, especially when you come at jazz later, at a later stage in life, you have to find a bridge to get into this music. And the point I'm getting at is treat the piece, treat the tunes, treat the standards as a song, as a piece of music, because that is what they are. To cover a little bit of the history, and, and I'm not like the biggest history nerd about this stuff as well, and I haven't, I admit that I'm not the most knowledgeable of the history on some tunes, but many of these tunes come from musical theater productions, Broadway shows, um, movies and films, you know, they're seminal parts of uh, culture, right? There's more to it. It's not just some tune that, you know, a heavy jazz cap blows over. This is 
you know, these were songs before they started making their way as vehicles for improvisation. Now this leads to a problem that regularly happens with beginning jazz musicians where, you know, especially when I came from like the fusion world and the rock world where the solo was like the centerpiece. So you had this melody or something you, that resembled a melody, a s massive solo section to just kind of show your chops and then cap it off with a recapitulation of the solo. But I find when it comes to interpreting standards, you're required to take a lot more of a musical approach. Well, not required, you know, some of the rules regularly get thrown out the window by heavy musicians, but you are required to kind of think about it musically, especially when you operate on these tunes. And, you know, the harmonic motion implies certain movements. The melodies imply certain movements. Really get inside the music and check out those old versions. For example, Someday My Prince Will Come, I mean, some people from my generation probably share a lot with that because we remember Snow White as a kid. At least I remember hearing the movie. I was just uh, watching the movie and hearing that song. I was talking about it with a student today. Did you know it just happens to be in the key of G in the movie? But the reason we play it in B flat is because of Miles. You know, many of the, mu the musicians that we look up to and revere um, took this music and, <clears throat> you know, made it their own. And that becomes the version we reference. But you still have to kind of go back and check out at least some earlier versions. You know, if you check out Skylark, go check out Hoagie Carmichael's version. Skylark, have you anything to say to me? Do, you know, that he sings it in A flat. Ellis also sings it in A flat. They might be in different keys than what you're used to. You know, if you go to a jam session or you play with a bunch of musicians, most people play Skylark in E flat. So you got to remember that stuff, you know, like really get inside the music and treat it as music, you know, treat your solos as an extension of the melody, you know, the melody is like an ideal solo for how to get through the changes, treat them as embellishments, you know, sure, you can go to outer space with it, and all of us do, all of us want to play that hip solo, you know, but this is music first and foremost, it's not a vehicle for, you know, pyrotechnics. And if you reference the musicians that do do that, that have gone to outer space, so to speak, and done a really crazy version of some sort, you have to understand that they probably have a very deep fundamental knowledge of how to play through this tune and make it sound pretty. Now, the other thing, <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about is um, melodies and specifically understanding melody. Um, one thing is that, because as I said, I've been catching myself singing this stuff regularly around the house and, or just in my off time or between students or even talking with students and kind of demonstrating the tune, I end up just singing the lyrics. Do I know the lyrics for every standard I know? Absolutely not. But I found the ones that stick with me the most or the ones that I regularly sing just around the house are the ones I know the lyrics to. And many of these old vocal standards from the Great American Songbook have lyrics to them. So like someone in love. Lately I find myself out gazing at stars Hearing guitars like someone in love Sometimes the things I do astound me That's the lyric. I tried singing this earlier and I couldn't remember it. Mostly whenever you're around me, around me. Lately I seem to walk as though I have wings. Bump into things like someone in love. Um, limp as a glove, you know, like it's like I always forget maybe one or two things but eventually it comes back to me at some point or the other but the lyric is so strong and it just helps kind of remember this tune but it also helps with your phrasing of how to get that melody sounding good you know if I'm gonna play like someone in love It 
it's inspired by the lyric and it's inspired by just learning this stuff it helps build a connection to the tune or even you know i've been singing skylark a lot skylark have you anything to say to me do you know of where my love can be is there a meadow in the mist where someone's waiting to be kissed so skylark you know and sure um it's kind of sometimes you know you listen to the lyrics they might be cheesy like some might consider them cheesy or a little old school but there is something to really getting inside the melody that way and i always tell the students check out the melody first because it's going to be your north star and your guide whenever you're playing even at a more advanced level right so now I wanted to close on a couple points, and one of the things is acknowledging kind of the barriers of entry for jazz, or at least standards. You know, one of them is that maybe we don't like the versions. Like, I didn't grow up with this music, so it took me a long time to find the versions I liked, to which the solution is find versions you like, but you know, do the research of finding stuff that you enjoy and then going to the lineage. It's kind of similar to my metal years in a way, when, you know, I found a band I liked and I would work on uh, finding everything I could about that band. You know, if like I was listening to old school Metallica, I would listen to the stuff with Mustaine and then after M Mustaine left. And then, you know, I checked out Megadeth and turns out I really like Megadeth, you know? And I would check out the bands that Metallica influenced or who are the bands that influenced Metallica or who are the bands that influenced Megadeth, you know, even with the Shredders, like Ingve was influenced by Paganini. So then I would go check out Paganini, and that was an extension of the stuff I used to like as a kid, like Bach and all that. So, you know, suddenly everything starts coming together. Do the same thing with a standard. If you find a modern standard you like, jeez, it's really coming down outside. Like, you can probably hear it on the microphones. It's kind of crazy. It's even showing up on the waveforms. But, you know, if you see this, st if you find a version you like, Go check out that version, then check out who influenced them. Check out the earliest version of the tune. Sure, you might not like that early version, but at least you know the history of where it comes from. And maybe how the version you like led to some creative decisions. The, you know, the version you like you know, led to them taking certain creative decisions. Maybe you'll understand that better. So go check that out. Another thing is sound quality. Again, that's related to versions. Go check, check out sounds you like. It, listening to stuff from the 30s, the 40s, and the 20s might not be the easiest listening experience. To that, I suggest, you know, try get past the aesthetic. And if you can't get past the aesthetic, that's all well and good. I'm not going to be um, extremely hypercritical about it, because a lot of people are confused about how to get into this genre in the first place. And I think being overly critical of someone who doesn't know better isn't really conducive to helping them. She's wondering if the water is going to come in through the windows. But, you know, it's, it's not conducive to helping them learn the music. So, all in all, I just wanted to do this video for you guys. Kind of give you some pointers on how to sound better at standards, how to get better at jazz, you know, and part of it is really just learning the music. So I'm going to dive onto Patreon and do a little bit of a deeper dive, and maybe into Like Someone Love, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.